Uh, the quick, the, the, the quick, the quick intro is that, uh, Tetra Labs is launching the first coalition in DeFi and essentially like you just have to link out with just a quick bullet point of who you are and what you want to bring and just link with Stu and all his guys Perfect. and they will take care of everything. And it's real broad right now, but it's just really exciting. And there it is. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, um, we should, we should, we should, uh, ideally we'll hear from Stu with a few more announcements uh, over the next week, uh, I was told. So, so you can look out for that. Nothing, nothing I can, I can, I can spill today, but <laughs> there's a, there's a lot, there's a lot of interest, uh, um, that's been building up. I had no idea, but, um, how much, but, uh, I'll let him, let him get into that. Um, I got a, I got a question for let since we got him up here speaking real quick. I've noticed he's done a, a new series, right? Uh, like on coaching. So, yeah, in the past maybe four days, you've banged out like six six episodes. So my question to you would be, can you give us a highlight of uh, what you've uh, learned or what's been on the show so far? What what stands out most? Let. So coming back to DeFi, I decided the best thing I can do is add that element to my channel. So all the founders, all the devs, all the bros, I'm bringing them down and I'm just getting to the most core element of what life is and what we're here to do as men. And this is just what I've been doing for over 20 years. And I realized, you know what, if I help the creators really, really dig into like their purpose, we can create such fire in this community from each individual community and a part of one DeFi coalition moving in one direction with all of our different flags. And that excites me. That is like, oh my God, but it has to be held by the right container or else it all falls apart. So Stu and his team, he has like a milk container, the most incredible people. Say that again. Like a milk container. Yeah, exactly. Like, here's what it is. There's DeFi, right? And then there's all these communities. And what you have is Tetra Labs forming like Voltron at the top in an overarching ability where every single community can become a part of this coalition that will in the future have all the tools as well as automation. So it's just the, the, uh, the, the seed is out and everyone's welcome. But all you have to do is just link with Stu or his team and just bullet point, not a big thing, just quick bullet point. And before you know it, there it is. We already have the first four founding m members, and it's really exciting. Okay. Yeah. You've taken the, the Tetra Red Pill. Congratulations. <laughs> I as well. <laughs> exactly. Everyone will soon, because why, why sit in front of your computer and click when you can drag and drop? 100%. 100%. Hey, uh, hey, Neil. Um, yeah. You are, you, you're about, mate. I just just wondered if you looked at that uh, that last post I did on uh, on the goat token. Uh, no, it's the, you mentioned a ratio uh, just now, right? It's just looking at the, at the numbers and the spreads. Yeah, so that that should be a chart. Unless I've stuffed it up, that should be a chart with goat token against uh, rat POS. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's several tokens out there. They have spreads like that, that that trade, and it's just finding the right ones to jump in, and that's where you make your money if you just know what you're doing. Um, and so, just watching the price action, look at the trends, and you can really place these limit, these especially compound limit orders. I mean, I know y'all don't have them yet, but you know, yep. us in the testing room have them. We're using them, looking at it, and you know, you know, we're not being greedy. It's just we're just taking advantage of these things as they come along, and make yep. sure the functionality is working like it's supposed to more than anything but yeah it, it's really going to change the game for people who who, who just want to set a set one set one set of trade and walk away and come back when it's, when they complete and start over again you know and so i think it'll make people who like to trade uh more effective without a doubt yeah 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 so basically for anyone that's not familiar um you, you can or, or, or sorry i should say not familiar with, with usually setting limit orders uh, but the, the power of it is you can basically set it below, say, let's say, for example, you want to accumulate more PLS or PLSX or whatever token you, that you, you want to accumulate, uh, and you can set a percentage uh, in on this, um, how much below the, the current market price. If it spikes down and your order, get, and your order gets filled, um, you just picked up, uh, you, you bought the dip, basically, haven't you? 
Exactly, and that's the thing. You, you, if you, if you, you have, a, you have to have a plan first. Kind of where do you want to be? Which token you want to accumulate? And yeah. you know, a, a pair of tokens that you don't matter which one you end up with, it's a win-win again. Like Pulse or Pulse X, those are the, the easiest pairs because you can put high amounts of liquidity in your limit order and not push the price against yourself versus other pairs that you may be limited yeah. to a couple hundred bucks. It depends on how much the pool is. You know, you just got to watch those things. Those are the metrics you got to look at and, and then volatility too. So the, the perfect thing is high liquidity, high trading volume and high volatility. Those three things you can make money swing trading. If yeah. you, you lack one, you have to wait in time for say, if you have fewer transactions or low volatility, you have to wait longer for the price moves, as long as you have a lot of liquidity, it means typically there's going to be a lot of action because people can safely trade in and out of those pairs, typically. Uh -huh. So it's just it's just something people have to think about when they when they set these things, and then the whole slippage understanding of of those three elements and how much slippage you set accordingly. That's something you have to just calculate and figure out on your own because there's no magic bullet. It's yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, gonna, it's it's a very it's a variable function of of the data, and that's it's it's going to be a user interaction thing. So you know, high risk, yeah. high volatility, high slippage. That's typically what you need to do. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically, the the, the lower li lower liquidity, um, probably you might have to play with with the slippage a little bit to get to, to get filled. Yeah, because it, it, just and then you got to be careful not to overdo your trade in in the pool. So if you yeah. only have a hundred thousand dollars in the pool in the pool and you try to move a thousand, that's a that's a big chunk statistically. And so you're gonna push the price yourself and you could end up being moving against yourself if somebody is trading in the same block. So it's just it's those are the games people have just to realize. But I mean we've we've learned that you can get a few more or a few less tokens depending on what of, of what happens in the block. That your trade executes, uh, especially with with high high volatility, and that's just something that somebody people just will just have to just experiment with, experiment with, experiment with over time to really yeah. understand the ramifications of that. Yeah, no, so I put. Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, 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 Ben. Go ahead. I've put uh, in the chat here. Uh, I've put uh, a link to Neil's video where he goes in depth on it. If anybody's interested, and oh, the DJ. The DGen proto guy is going crazy with thumbs up and everything. So let's <laughs> request the mic, Mr. DGen. We want to hear about your protocol and uh, ratio trading on it or whatever you have to say, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Also, Identity identity Block is cooking some pretty amazing stuff. I'd like to hear from him as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, um, have we got uh, uh, Black Sheep? Are you there? Or um, can you speak? Or are you just, are you just falling back to listen? Because uh, I'll. I used your uh, goat token as uh, as an example for for limit orders, and I uh, just wanted to. Uh, I've got a couple of questions about the project. If you're about, mate. Yeah, he's got the mic. So give us the one minute pitch on it for anybody that's not familiar with it, like myself, please. Let's start there. Oh, no, he's falling back down to listen. He might, he might not be able to talk, so that's okay. Um, but that's no problem. Um, if, if, you, if, you, if you can uh, jump on or, or uh, come up to speak, just, just let us know any time, mate. So... Um, all we're saying, oh yeah. So we were just uh, into the into the limit orders. So uh, with the slippage, um, just start off start off um, slow, uh, or s start off at low low slippage, and then uh, increase it if you if you need to. So if you if you're in a high liquidity pair, then um, then you, you probably don't need to you don't need to adjust your slippage higher. Is that right, Neil? Correct. Yeah. The higher liquidity, the lower the slippage. But then, if you have high volatility, though, you have to add up, have to bump up a little bit to make sure you get in the block, right? Yeah. If there's, it, it depends on what your targets are, too, obviously. But if you're in, in ranges like, for instance, when, when Pulse and um, a USDL were just launched in that pair, there was a lot of volume, 
and a lot of liquidity, but it's also a lot of volatility. So in order to get your pairs to to, to, uh, to deploy, your your orders deploy, you had to bump that slippage up to fit in those, mm -hmm. those big wicks because there happened to be a lot of big wicks happening very yeah. rapidly. So that's just something that you got to play by ear. And we we literally went through that in like in, in real time, testing that out, trying different things, and see what yeah, worked and what not because it was kind of a new under undercharted territory. Because yeah. no, no, this never existed before as far as how you do decentralized limit orders in real time on the blockchain and what do you expect? And then we, we kind of come up with a solution based upon the, the answers of people. Like, this is what you had to expect based upon how the numbers are being aggregated across the blockchain. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and also um, we found that, um, that with, the, with the, the limit orders, when they get filled, you know, it's a double-edged sword. There, it, it can actually fill and execute at a, at a better price than what what you've what you've said, depending on the block time. So, um, within that, within the range of what happens in the within one block, it, uh, you can get a better price, or you might not get as good a price. Is that right? Correct. Yeah, it depends on which side of of the of the wick you're on at the time. You know, and there's no <laughs> way to know that because you can't predict when somebody else can come in and market buy or sell. So. Yeah. If it goes, is you know, sometimes you'll get fewer tokens, or sometimes you get more tokens. It just depends on, you know, you're not really going to lose out completely. It's just that yeah. the amount you get may be lesser or extra, so you're not losing. So even yeah. if your target is at a low, low rate, and you may not catch it at the very bottom of that price, but in a, in a, in a range that's a little bit higher, which is okay. You, that's just the way it is. Nobody ever hits the bottom. It's very seldom yeah. that any one person you're going to get all your money. In your buy and or sell to hit the bottom of the top because if there's, there's no money there to be sold or traded at that point, you can forget yeah. it, you know, and so that's just yeah. what happens. Yeah, and, that, and that's all just a function of actually making all this work on chain uh, as well. We've got, to, we've got to work within the limitations of that ecosystem compared to a centralized exchange. Well, yeah, because it's it's a, it's a dynamic system. That's what makes yeah. it different and, and, and unique. And how we have to experience as we experience this, we'll learn things and create new technology to to maybe help take advantage of some of this. Because you know, volatility is good, and, and I like price price volatility. I think that's how you can make easy money if you like to trade, because that's what you want. You want the price to go up and down a lot, because in in those ups and downs is where you make your money. Yeah, exactly. hey, Neil. Go ahead. So limit orders are cool, right? But compound limit orders are even cooler. What's the word on that? It's yeah, yeah. Well, we talked about that. Or, yeah, it's it's, it's in, in, any day now. Stu can you know push push it out the door. He just waiting mm -hmm. on Stu. So that's where we're at. It's just, I mean, well, can you tell people about it and what you'll be able to do, and it'll be even better for traders and stuff like that? Well, Silverback already kind of. The, yeah, we, we just got to cover that. Um, but that's okay. Um, let's hear from um, uh, Black Sheep. Are you there, man? Yes, I am, sir. How's it going? Sorry, hey. I had a problem connecting on the computer. Um, no, how's that, everybody doing today? Yeah, really, really good. Man, I, yeah, I, got, I, just, put on the, I got put on the spot and, I, and asked, um, because I used your token as an example for the, the charts for demonstrating how cool. you... Yeah, yeah. That, so, that, that, um, I appreciate the shout, and that's what a lot of people don't, uh, you know, maybe they, if they're not familiar with our ecosystem, uh, it's a swing trader's dream, man, you know, especially when you're setting up limit orders and stuff like that. Uh, because of our, our contract itself is, uh, is, is, is a peg, it's an up only uh, contract, so it's basically pegged at a certain ratio and it only goes up. So yes. anytime uh, it dips really low, if you get a big dump on the, on the, um, on the PLS pair on, on Pulse X, you can actually buy it. Um, at, at that, at that, you can buy that dump, and you can instantly redeem it on the on the um, on the site or on the on the contract itself for for an instant profit, right? So it was really yeah. good game three, and the opposite when it when it pumps really hard, you can uh, you can do the opposite. You can you can buy it, and then you can uh, uh, you can mint it on the on the site, and then re and then uh, sell it or on the um, yeah. on the Pulse X pair. So yeah, there's a lot of a lot of good uh, opportunities there. But yeah, I just want to come yeah. on and say hi and uh, and appreciate your. Uh, your shout out. We got a lot of st good stuff coming. Uh, we got because uh, our, our main partner is uh, Spark Swap, and they're they're starting the perpetual contract soon, so you'll be able to leverage Trade Goat and all that. Uh, oh, so we yes. got a lot of good stuff coming down the road, and uh, we're going to tighten X Fork uh, for our ecosystem as well. And um, yeah, a lot of good Whoa. stuff coming. So definitely keep an eye on us. <laughs> yeah, we're just working hard, man. Just try trying to bring some good stuff to the space. Man, so, you've been you've been you've been busy. I I, I used to yeah, catch a lot of your, yeah. your live streams, man. So um, okay. and I, 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 I spent I started spending a lot of time on Pulse Chain. So 
Yeah, I actually um, finished up a, a song with uh, RG3 too. I have a video coming out soon, and uh, and uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> I'm really, really busy. So yeah, RG3 is my boy. I, we go way back. I'm an OG Hexican, and uh, yeah, just uh, happy to be, and proud to be a part of this space and uh, do whatever we can to bring good stuff and uh, good quality products and uh, make sure nobody loses their ass out there. So yeah, yeah, well exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So. Stay responsibly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, try. <laughs> no, yeah, no, you're welcome, man. Is there is there any other uh, any? Uh, I mean, you've, you've you've covered a lot of stuff that's coming out soon for you. Is there yeah. anything else that you'd like to go as far as the detail about uh, the actual goat token and and the mechanism of how how it how it achieves just uh, perpetually sort of uh, lifting the yeah. price? Yeah, exactly. Well, we got a mint and redeem uh, 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 feed that comes in on every every time somebody uh, mints goat. Um, when when it's minted, it has to have the, the whatever ratio it's at. It has to have that 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 backing. That um, uh, it has to have that that amount of pulse behind it at all times. So it's a fully liquid. Instead of having your liquidity pairs, where you might have um, some kind of uh, like th third party um, kind of um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, third party. Um, uh, what's that word I'm looking for? Um, there's no counterparty risk. That's what I mean. Counterparty risk. Uh, so you don't okay. have any, gotcha. and it's it's all 100% PLS back. So like right now we have just under a million dollars liquidity, which puts us up you know pretty far as far as um, you don't really see wow. us on the. That, that far up on the on the uh, like deck screen or anything like that uh, because it, all the all the con it's all a contract based it's all back yeah. in the contract so we, we have seven point five yeah we have seven point five billion pls in the in the contract which is about nine hundred twenty five thousand dollars right now and uh, it, yeah you're so, sort of uh, it's, it's sort of flying under the radar for people looking at liquidity aren't you because it's in a contract yeah, yeah like EMP uh, yeah. contracts uh, were this uh, yep. similar on on Binance uh, you don't really it's see it fair, on uh, yeah. Yeah. We're not really like, I mean, we're just, we, we built a, a place for our community to come over here and have fun on, on posting. You know, we don't really need uh, a whole lot of, you know, anybody else to come in. And that's the great thing about it. Cause it's not a Ponzi. There's no really Ponzi economics. You know, it's just based on volume yeah. uh, coming in and out. You got, uh, you got your mint to redeem that 5% mint, that 5% redeem just pushes that ratio up over time. People that have been holding since day one, we, we launched like four months ago, October 16th. Uh, right yeah. now they're up about 37% on their bag of PLS, the ones that have, that have hold and held. And that's, that's really, you know, that's a real power, powerful thing to have, you know, where will we be a nice. year from now? We'll be at a two ratio. You have double your, double your PLS just by sitting and, and having a good time with this. And, uh, you know, we have fun. We do daily live streams every day on my, on my YouTube channel here on X too. So, um, every day at 420, we've done, uh, our community's done, uh, what, 1,002, today's 1,223 episodes in a row. So. We're uh, wow. and, and breaking records, <laughs> and, yeah, we're a lot of moments, you know. And we got, you know, I know, know a lot of big people in the space, and you know, we're just uh, slowly but surely getting our name out there. And um, yeah, we're just having a lot of fun, man. That's that's what we're here for. That's what Pulse Scene is all about. It's uh, definitely uh, definitely the place you want to be if you're yeah, um, yeah, yeah. you're looking for yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, for if sure. anyone, I, I, I can account to that. If anyone hasn't uh, caught any of the, the DJ, DJ Protocols uh, live streams, uh, these guys are a lot of fun. Uh, they they do not take themselves too seriously, but they <laughs> they've you actually got that. Man. You do, you do. But but they got their heads, the head uh, screwed on straight. Yeah, uh, yeah. A lot, a lot like what uh, Lit Energy brings to the space as well. Like you know, we're all here to f have fun and uh, and make money too. You know, so yeah, oh, that's yeah, good for sure. And the, and the, and your long, long, your longevity, I, I can sort of account for that too. So man, so yeah, hats off to you. Yeah, yeah. Well, appreciate it. Yeah, I know there's a lot of eyes on us out there, and I, I appreciate you guys' support. And uh, if you ever need anything, you know where to find me. We got a Telegram channel with like 3,300 people in here, and we're live yeah. every day. So you always, uh, if you have any questions, just come on the stream, and don't be afraid to ask. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll try not to be a stranger, man. Yeah. All right. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate you. Yeah. Cool. 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 I got um, a quick question for him. Can, can are we allowed to ask the guest questions? Of course, of course. Six, six people up here. <laughs> right. Let's, 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 let's ask the guys some questions since we got them up here. That's what the panels a panel for. So, so um, you said double your pulse. Like, how does that work? You said if you hold it for a year or something, can you talk a little bit more about that, please? That's interesting. Yeah. Well, basically, as the community grows, as the ecosystem grows, um, like I said, there there is a there is a five percent mint and a five percent redeem redemption. Um, so when when you when you mint, you're actually putting uh, fr you know you're putting fresh WPLS into the contract, and that uh, that five percent uh, fee that that gets uh, applied to it goes to raising the price floor of the like right now we're at a one dot three seven one point three seven oh seven on the ratio. So if somebody comes in and they they mint like a couple thousand dollars worth. It's going to push that up to like a 1.3708 or 1.3709, right? Um, and it's uh, and and then the, the the reverse goes for when people get out of the contract, they redeem it, um, and they can redeem it for full um, 
uh, for wh whatever the, uh, the the ratio is at that time uh, for 100%, um, well, minus that 5%, um, you know, for their, uh, for, for their, um, to, to receive, retrieve the PLS back out of the contract. So, and then that, that constant mint and redemptions mints and redemptions that, that happen um, is what pushes up that ratio over time. So yeah. It, so how does that a double? That's, that seems kind of confusing. That's a little no, it, confusing it, it, no, just no, on the it, thing. So like, how do you double your pulse in a year? Yeah. Well, no, I'm saying if it goes to like a two ratio, so if we started at a one and you started when we first got in and it goes to a two on the ratio, then you, then you have double the PLS that you started with because now the ratio is two. Now we're, we're two times the price of pulse. And if you look at our chart, you can see that we're always, we're always tr trading uh, above PLS on the, um, on, on the chart. Like right now we're, our U S dollar value is at uh, uh, three zeros and a 1610 while we got uh, the, the price of um, PLS is three zeros and a one, two, four, right? So we're we're actually we're we're constantly right now uh, at this current time we're we're uh, what about one three uh, one three six or one one point three seven um, above the the regular one ratio of, of PLS if that makes sense so yeah and over time as as people mint and redeem in the contract that ratio climbs and climbs and it does take a while you know if you just come in and out yes you're, you're going to take a hit because there's a five percent mint. And a five percent redeem. So over time, you, you, you would take. So um, that's like a tax. So that's yes, a like, tax. Yeah. Yes, it's a tax. It's a tax. Yes, exactly. It's how a how are people goes... responding to that? Because uh, you know, in the pulse chain community, I don't have a problem with it, but uh, like uh -huh. people do have a problem with that inherently on pulse chain. Um, so, what are your thoughts on that? Have have, have you? had an obstacle with that or is everybody not, okay not really. with it? What's your perception? No, every, we, we haven't had any complaints. I mean, if people coming into the ecosystem, they know that this is, this is kind of a long-term play. It's a, it's almost like single asset staking for your PLS. So you, you come in, you sit for a while. If you're, if you're going to be holding pulse for, you know, three to five years, I mean, if you're, you're going to hold a long term, you can put it in here and over time. Cause you know, like I said, we're not going anywhere. We've been here we've been around for, you know, this, 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 uh, this community has been around for six going on our seventh year. Now we're not going anywhere. This is our, this is our play on, on, on pulse chain. You know, this is what we want. We wanted to build. We wanted to build somewhere where someone can just put their pulse in and over time they can grow their bag of pulse. And, you know, to, you know, uh, there's no, there's no saying like when it's, we're going to get to a two or when we're going to get to a three ratio. It's just, you know, just kind of come and hang out and have fun and, and enjoy the ride. You know, that's, that's, that's yeah. where we're at. And um, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's nobody, it just depends on what you want. I mean, if you, if you don't want that, that, uh, that tax hanging over your head and you don't want, you don't want to wait the, the long term, then, you're, you're, you're welcome to stay out and do other things. You know, we're just giving you something that, uh, you know, our community loves and, and enjoys. And, and the, the power of that uh, the single asset backing and, and the, the, the fact that the, um, the PLS value can never go down is really powerful because we have other, we have like a feeder contract that's connected to it, which, you know. Uh, yeah, how does that work? So, how can it never go down? That's, that's interesting. Like, yeah, could because, you touch a little bit on that? Yeah, just because of the, like, the, like I said, the, the ratio only goes up because the 5% mint and the 5% redeem or anytime somebody somebody comes in and mints it or redeems it, they, they buy or sell basically. They're they're raising the price for it. And that price for it can only go one direction. It only goes up. So so at, over time, like like I said, it just it just only goes up. And that and what that what that happens is since we have the that the arbitrage between the, the outside pull, when people when people come in and, and they they dump on that on that pulse X pull, um, they can they can they can redeem it. For, for an instant profit, if somebody buys that, that dip, they can redeem it for an instant profit on the site. So that gives us automatic built-in um, arbitrage and, and, and price movement and, and, uh, and turning the ratio that, that way too. So there's lots of, you know, the, and over time it just, uh, and, we, and everything we add to the ecosystem, like we've got a lottery, we've got the feeder contract, which is like an, like an ROI uh, style thing. Like uh, I don't know if anybody was familiar with the elephant money ecosystem over on, on, on BSC. We took a lot of, a, a, couple of the, couple of the parts that he has over there. We brought it to Pulse Chain because we, we thought that um, he did have some decent contracts, but he's just on the wrong chain, man. BSC, you know, nobody really yeah. cares much about BSC anymore. So we decided to build it over here and it's actually doing very well. We actually outpaced what he was doing over there so far um, over there on, on BSC, just because of the price appreciation of Pulse. You know, we're up from the bottom. I think we're right. up on uh, USD value like 300% since we launched. Um, so it's doing really good. And we got more more coming. And everything that we add to this ecosystem always goes to that mint and redeem function. If it's the lottery, if it's the feeder, um, even the NFTs when you come out of the... We have NFTs. I don't know if you guys know about that, but we also have NFTs that are powered by um, David Feeder. Uh, he, he runs yeah, the yeah. validatorstore.com. We have NFTs that actually you, you can buy a, a fractionalized share of a full validator node if you don't want to set up the equipment or anything like that. 
And uh, th so that's another another option. And any, anytime somebody comes in and they they, they, they sell their NFTs, that they put them back on the marketplace, the the, the mint uh, it, it's paid out in goat. So that goes through the mint function to pay out in goat too. And and when we launch our our Titan X contract, our Titan X fork, sorry, um, it, it's it's going to do the same thing. Everything's going to go mint in through the mints and out through the redeem, which will keep that ratio turning. You know, and the more volume, the more people we, we get in here, the more eyes we get on the cut on the you know on this uh, on this ecosystem. Uh, over time, we expect that uh, that ratio to start climbing. Um, one last faster, question faster, for you. So. Yeah, From me, just one last question. So why yeah. Titan X? Okay. Like, is that like doing really good on Ethereum? If I was to go look at it, I think it was yesterday. It hit an all-time low, right? It did, and it did, but, so, 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 hold on. So, yeah, like, ahead. but why, why Titan X? Like, just because that, we, we, it's a, that it's model is looking like... Mm -hmm. Because it's an interesting, it's an interesting idea, and I and I think uh, if you look at the long term and, and the way the inf the inflation de de you know deflates itself over time, um, it is it is I think it is a viable lo long term, uh, so, and they still have millions and millions of dollars in buybacks in there. So I don't think it's a. Dead so you're going to tie your ship to tight necks. You're going to tie part of your ship to a to uh to tight necks. No, we're we're going. It's a fork, so we're actually going to go in and and, yes. and make some of the, some of the mechanics even better. We have a lot of ideas where we're working with some good good developers, and it's yeah. just you know it's an idea. We're, we're okay, well that's important to, yeah. to, to it's, talk it's, about how you're yeah, how you're doing yeah, that because if you're just doing the tight next, no, it's never going to be mm -hmm. no, it's, and nothing we do here is an exact fork of anything. We always add something, a few changes yeah. along the way to make it better. Yeah, you have to, sorry for, for any mis mis uh, confusion, but yeah, no, we're, yeah, we're yeah. definitely going to make it better, and um, yeah, just just uh, you have to look it, out for it because I, <laughs> I think it's going to do it, better. It would, well. it would be an addition anyway, so it's not like. Uh, the existing yep. systems don't don't rely on the new contract too. So, I mean, most yep. most most of the developers they're 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 doing everything in a modular style. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's release test, um, uh, adjust, and then um, you know, um, release the contract. You know, sort of yep. uh, make it immutable if they have to. I mean, DJ DJ Protocol's got got his community too. So, like, um, he doesn't have to you know uh, re release it out to the whole world all at the same time as well. So, yep. and. Uh, yeah, it, it's done. It's done okay on on ETH, and it came out on B and B as well. So, yeah, um, uh, uh, and that's that's kind of what we're going for because what, what they did on B on BSC is kind of like okay, so so they they fixed a lot of the things like the overinflation on certain days and stuff like that. They they did a lot of little tweaks that uh, we're taking a look at, and yeah, you know, we're we're talking yeah. months down the road. We're, we're going to do some serious R and D on it, make sure that it is a viable product yeah. that it is going to kick some ass, and we're not going to bring anything to Pulsion that's that garbage, you know. So yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so far, so good. We're 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 kicking ass. And I appreciate every one of you. Um, do, any other questions? I, I'm sorry to take over your space, but <laughs> no, 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 absolutely. That, really that, appreciate you having uh, me on here. The, the space is for you guys. So like, uh, because cool. I because I get a good, really good education from you guys too. So, um, awesome. But uh, th awesome. thanks, thanks for stepping up, man. Um, yeah, um, no problem. I I had a question. But Question real okay. quick about the uh, NFTs with David Feeder and the validators. Can you break that down my, real quick? That sounds is, super cool. My life is awesome. I love you, buddy. I've, I've seen you around uh, forever now. You're, 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 you're awesome. So, yeah, basically what, what we did is um, – much love, yeah, bro. Uh, what we did was we uh, we, we partnered with David Feeder uh, because a lot of people like they don't want to run the they don't want to run the, the equipment and stuff like that. So what we did was we gave so so basically uh, 500k PLS. If you go to djprotocol.io forward slash NFT, um, you can you can actually you can um, you you can mint them for 500k PLS. So instead of instead of paying what is it 32 million PLS for a full validator, you can actually get 164th of a of a of a validator. Per NFT and every 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 one that's minted. Um, once we get up to eat every sixty four that we have minted, um, the money goes off to David Feeder. He creates a new stake, and we have that for full transparency. We have a um, a link you can go to, and you can actually see. I think we have like thirty nine or forty validators on, online right now. Uh, full full validator nodes running, and they're just constantly printing out. And um, as as the the ones that you have in your wallet are, are the ones that you're going to get rewards for. I mean, it's not something that's going to get you rich overnight, you know, but it is something that does does support the uh, ecosystem. And uh, we're we're very uh, happy to, to to be a part of it, you know, and bring it to the, awesome. to the space. So, yeah, that's awesome. Was there, and and was the, 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 the you need thirty two million uh, PLS to have your own validator as well. Plus, yeah. David Feeder is well well known oh, in the space. Oh, he's like a solid he's, dude. <laughs> he's, the, he's, solid he's dude. the guy. He's the guy. Yeah, for that, sure. That, my my favorite thing about David Feeder being a part of that is that his passion in, in life. Like a year ago, I think he said. I'm so happy that my I get to do this. This is my dream. Oh yeah. yeah. And like 
I love that that's his dream and he's able to really help people with the validator yes. store. It's so cool. He's super passionate and that's why we work with him. You know, we don't, we, uh, we, we, you you you're, you're, uh, you are who you surround yourself with. Right. And that's, he's just a great person and we, we love to have him uh, as part yeah. of our community and our ecosystem. So awesome guys. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for the questions. And, uh, yeah, I'll let you, I'll let you get back to your, uh, to your thing. I, I got to get ready for my stream here in a little bit, but, uh, it's been, it's been, yeah, fun yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, See you guys around. I um, <laughs> I just uh, as as you're heading out, thanks again for coming up, and uh, just sure. drop some of so, so any of the links that you want to drop in the in the chat for for your protocol. Uh, that sure. would be awesome. Please please do. Okay. Please pray. Yeah, no problem. Awesome. Drop them in the, the in the comments on the on the on the space or something. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Right. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, we'll do. Thanks a lot, buddy. Thanks, thanks, buddy. All right. Yeah. So, um, can I just say, uh, who, who who haven't we heard from? Um, have we got Ty? Have we got Ty here? Are you just in listen mode, mate, or can you step uh, up and? Yeah, I'm here. I was just being patient, listening to all the the good talk going on. Um, thanks for holding thanks, a, a professional space where it's it's actually nice to hear uh, <laughs> positive right. conversation and not just yelling and screaming and people tearing each other down. So that's awesome. Yeah, hey. Thank you. Uh, and I just want to give a quick shout out to DJ and Protocol guys because they reached out to a, a friend of ours, Sammy Chica. She had a mishap recently with an unfortunate. Uh, exploit or whatever it was with a, a dap on pulse chain so I appreciate know. you guys uh reaching out and consoling her as well um that was awesome uh Absolutely. for t-shares lit all you guys benjamin uh, uh looking forward to doing some stuff with Neil for t-shares we've got you yeah, know we've been working with Stu in the background for a while too and we've got some exciting stuff to uh, automate with some of their software as a service uh yeah. coming out in the future so everything's starting to like um take shape on pulse chain you know there's more and more and more infrastructure coming out and more and more collaborations um yeah i think uh maybe we're seeing that that turning point now which is awesome uh, id yeah. down there he's got some cool stuff happening as well so yeah it's uh i'm really enjoying this this time right now uh it's it's, it's been a tough road the last nine months since launch um just with, <laughs> with, with you know people just focusing on the price uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, I think uh, right now we're we're in a in a phase where everyone should uh, take a breath and enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's gone to their corners, um, and uh, you can find you can find uh, wherever you uh, wherever you fit in, you can get in, and you can have the sort of conversations and and uh, and uh, yeah, like um, uh, part of the motivation for me to start this is just so um, we could have uh, we could just have everyone come up and and, and chat and. Um, and demonstrate that you can actually do it um, without without any sort of fighting, without any sort of any sort of dramas, uh, because there's such such uh, such a lot of cool stuff being happening, and uh, people are organising. Uh, while everyone, some well, some people might be sleeping, but um, but there's some great stuff coming out, especially with uh, with with Tetra. And uh, um, I was wondering while I've got you too. Um, um, for that, for those anyone listening that that's on the call, um, uh, could you could you give us a bit of a breakdown uh, as far as uh, your protocols that are that are coming out? Because I'm hearing some some good stuff. Not not to say announcing things you haven't released yet, um, but uh, just what you've got existing out in the marketplace at the moment. Sure, sure. Um, the only thing that is actually out right now is um, Barista. Yeah, uh, I'll put that in the nest. We actually just did a, a stream today. Uh, showing the difference between Barista and Liquid Loans and uh, some of the nuances between the stability pools and why you should use one or the other or both. It's not a binary uh, yeah. thing. It's not about getting everyone to come over because it, it depends on everyone's... Uh, what, what the outcome they're trying to achieve, right? Like if they're trying to get exposure to uh, Pulse, if they're underexposed to Pulse and their primary focus is to get more pulse that's all they're interested in then they really yeah. and they and they want to do that in a passive uh in a passive way then they should 100 percent just be in the liquid loan stability pool uh yeah the opposite to that is if they've got a big bag of pulse and they're not really interested in pulse anymore um but they want to uh get some passive apy uh and they've got stable coins you know, they put it in barista then they get uh exposure to uh, the arbitrage opportunity when there's a liquidation. So the pulse gets swapped yep. back into the USDL and puts back in the stability pool, all automated. Um, now, these are battle-tested contracts we, from B Protocol on Ethereum, which were interacted with Liquidity on Ethereum. So we collaborated with Liquid Loans. Um, yep. You know, they gave us their SDKs and they just made it a little easier, uh, some chit-chats with our devs and their devs, but ultimately we, we built it all. Um, yep. And so, yeah, we're super excited to, to have that out. Um, 
the the borrow and the redemption section are literally just front ends for liquid loans. So if yeah. you take a loan on liquid loans, you'll see it on Barista in the borrow section and vice versa. Same with mm-hmm. the redemptions, you see the same thing. The stability pool and the staking pool, uh, we have contracts on top of this. So everything ultimately feeds into their contracts. Um, but yeah. obviously the, the stability pool is a, a fork of B protocol, the auto rebalancing. And then with the staking pool, we've just added our own incentive token called Bean to that uh, further incentive for people to earn yield, whether they want to sell it or provide LP. Um, and we have future yeah. utility yeah. for that with some other dApps we've got coming out. So um, yeah, can, yeah, can, can, I, can I tease out of you, uh, is there anything you can now announce yet about um, an application for the Bean token? Yeah, we, we, we didn't say anything while we were on testnet and um, uh, because we didn't want to like uh, be seen to like trying to like pump up people to get involved and yeah uh, be opportunistic. We sort of like you know, just we'll wait till everything's closed off and then there's no like being seen to be manipulative to try and gain you know people into the system or whatever. But now that it's all out, um, you know, it's, we're, we're free to talk about it. We, we wouldn't be setting expectations now, but um, yeah. So we <laughs> yeah, be careful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, there is future utility. Like right now, we've got a fox pool um, and some LPs on V. You know, we're trying to uh, work with all the dexes. So we have a V two on yep. nine millimeter, a V three on nine millimeter, uh, a V two on pulse X, and then we have an eighty twenty uh, pool on on fox yep. called uh, fox. Pulse. On Barista Pulsacino is the name in the pool. That's about to get the logo put on engaged over the uh, okay. coming coming days. I've just spoken to the dev at, at, at Fox um, yep. there, so it just takes a little bit of time. Um, so people yep. are actually earning um, fees on, you know, if they're doing concentrated liquidity on 9 millimeter. But, yeah, yep. we do have um, Bistro, which is going to be an OTC marketplace coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a contract on there for the Bean where it's – it has some similarities to Hex in the sense of like bigger and longer staking rewards yep. you. And so what that is, is, and it's not going to be anything crazy like 15 years or a hundred years or any of that stuff. Yeah. It's just, it's literally going to be like, we haven't locked down the days, but maybe like, yeah. you know, if you were to pick days, 15 days, 30 days, 45, something like that, but it'll actually get calculated every day. And so what happens is the longer and larger you stake in the bean in the, the bistro, uh, protocol, the the more you you reduce your fees when you do OTC deals on the protocol. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. That, um, so, so, that's, so, so the OTC deals that, that's that that's a good 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 thing because uh, you sort of like you're you're able to sort of get do, do things um, that that are off the. Uh, I mean, would you would you say it's suitable for someone with larger amounts or? Yeah. Well, we've. We, it was born out of necessity because we're doing um, Stakehouse, which is self-directed hex staking pools. And with every pool, there is a, a receipt token, right, for your position in the pool, yeah. which people can um, uh, obviously, you know, move from wallet to wallet or put in a note of safe or whatever to keep it safe while that stake's there. Um, yeah. But we wanted to have people to have the ability to, if they got into a financial hardship or situation, that they could actually extract value um, from their position mm-hmm. in the pool by selling um, fractionalized percentage of their pool or their whole position in the pool for whatever the reason might be. It could be for profit, right? Yeah. Um, but it could be, uh, you know, they need money. And so we didn't want to have, you know, there's no emergency end stake feature in there. So so the issue we, we came across when we, when we uh, were building that out is, well, there's going to be potentially over time lots of these pools. And that yeah. means there's going to be lots of these receipt tokens which are unique to every pool. How do, you, how, do you, how do people trade those? Because no one's going to set up LP for every pool. So that's why we're like, well, we need to build our own OTC marketplace where people can uh, trade T-share receipts, basically. Um, and then we thought, well, why don't we just open it up to ERC and PRC20s? And further to that, our own little spin on it is as opposed to like a, a one-to-one OTC, you can have a yeah. whale, like you said, a, a suitable for large yeah. amounts. So a whale could come in with like, 10 million units of hex and 10 people on the other side could buy a million each people can nibble at it it's not like a one-to-one it can be a one-to-many yeah yeah cool um so yeah and then we have like i don't know if you've seen some of the noise we've been making with some of our art and custom lyrics you know for our marketing um dave and our I team's I quite I passionate it's all over our timeline <laughs> i know you follow mcr but i don't think you follow bruce so maybe you, you 
Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll jump onto it. Um, so we are going to have some um, NFT collections coming out in the future. Some are just going to be for fun. Uh, some are going to be collect- collectibles. We've got some really cool ideas there for the community. Um, yep. And some will have utility where you will need the bean as well, which um, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about more about that in the future. But we, we, everything we do, we do think about how to like uh, uh, bring extra value and incorporate everything you know, that we do uh, into something in the future and to try and give value back to the community. And probably important to note, all of our dApps, um, if you hold our token, MCR, which will come out soon and stake yeah. it in the buffet, that's how you get uh, exposure to the fees from all of our dApps. And, uh, the free, and the fees on all of our dApps, like let's just talk about Barista for a minute because it's the only one out. Um, yeah. There's only one fee on Barista and that's in the stability pool and it only happens when a, uh, a, a rebalance takes place um, yeah. and, and, it, and it comes out of the, the rebalancing amount and it's 1% and 100% yeah. of that 1% goes to the stakers. So we don't scrape tax or do anything. Okay. Everything, everything we do is always back to the community who stake our token in our protocol. And, and the, the actual um, fu- the function of re- rebalancing, um, could you could you explain a little bit um, to anyone that, that doesn't know, including me, um, what the mechanism is for that, like it, within that, that that pool? Yeah, sure. I've got a, I can put in the, um, I'm putting the nest so people can have a visual representation of what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah. It should take a second and the, um, the, um, It'll, it'll come up with that, understanding the distinct difference between the two. So you can yep. see in the drawing um, yep. with liquid loans and then there's a underneath it, it has the, um, the barista stability pool and what's actually happening. So when a liquidation happens, the um, stability providers, they get rewarded by uh, providing the stability. Obviously, they earn some yep. uh, APY while they're waiting for a liquidation in the form of loan, right? Um, yep. But when a liquidation does happen, it takes USDL from that pool, and so whatever percentage you have in that pool, you, you know that's your percent that gets taken, yeah. and um, not whole, all of it, um, just yeah, yeah, yeah. a share. And in return, you get um, Pulse at a uh, discount. And so, how does that work? Basically, yeah. um, the the collateralization is one hundred and ten percent. So basically, so you're 10%. getting that ten percent roughly. It, it can be vary a little bit, but it, it's close to that, right? Um, yeah. And then. So, and then, so what happens on liquid loans is that's just sitting in a contract waiting for the, the user to come back and do an input, so claim it. So if they're on holidays, working, they're busy, it just sits in a contract doing nothing, uh, like a lot of claiming functions on a lot of dApps, until they come back and interact with that contract. And yeah. at that point, I mean, if they're looking to just uh, accumulate uh, Pulse, then that's like a DCA uh, discount buy, right? Um, yeah. But if they are purely looking to... Uh, get that pulse and then uh, arbitrage it to make the, you know, the, the, the profit, that, that market difference uh, yeah. on the discount, uh, then they really need to be there in real time to take that up because otherwise they're, they're on a, a 50-50 on which way pulse goes. If pulse keeps going down and it moves down further than the, than the 10% or 9.5% arbitrage, then they're slightly yeah. underwater uh, or more depending on how far it goes down. Now, the opposite to that is if pulse goes up and then they come back to the computer, they could be... Yeah, uh, the 10% plus whatever the, the market rose. Uh, yeah. So, so <clears throat> as I said before, just getting back to if you want exposure to Pulse or exposure to arbitrage. So in, yeah. in Barista, what happens is when that liquidation happens, uh, it auto rebalances that in, in effectively real time. Uh, there is a TWAP in there. Um, yeah. But there's we've, we've made our own bot, but we know that many bots will be out there to take this these uh, opportunities. And yeah, yeah, yeah. charge some differences, um, and so it, it it auto swaps in in chunks to avoid slippage um, yeah. and big downward movements on pulse, and swaps that back into USDL and stakes it on the user's behalf. So the USDL amount in the pool uh, will only go uh, up in over yeah. time. Now there could be times where if there's a massive move to the downside, that the liquidation gain will sit there as pulse. Um, purely because it won't, the logic in the system won't allow it to sell at a loss. It'll only sell okay. when it's in profit. Even if it's a half a percent or a percent, it'll only ever sell it 
when it's in profit for the users and put it back in the pool on their behalf. And the gas, it's through transactions to do all that. And that's all covered yeah. by the protocol. So if they did that on liquid loans, they'd have to um, pay those three transactions themselves. So just trying to automate it and that, and just getting onto the automation, that's where like, um, yeah, we're going to be working with Neil to, to automate other parts of our, our DAP with those guys uh, with software as a service. So we're pretty excited to um yeah yeah with Stu and, and Neil and that. We're, um, we're, we're, we're so we're so lucky, and this is uh, not just a plug, but actually just an honest opinion. We're so lucky to have the avail availability and access to to Stu and Neil and and Tetra to be able to have it on Pulse Chain first. I mean, there, there's so much market demand for for these automations uh, to to take away the. I mean, I mean, you just described a, a, quite a few aspects of your protocol. And some of these protocols, you have to think about every angle, and there's sometimes extra steps there where um, it's hard to explain it to people. And and like you sort of, it takes a little while to get used to it. But when you're looking for coming with some with automations to make it easier, uh, we get to get it here first on Pulse, which is just amazing. Yeah, we're building out our like we haven't streamed for ten months, and that's where we started back in the day, right? We started with streams. Mm. We did some community pools, facilitated some community pools for sacrifices to try and. I was, I, was, I, was, I was in all your pools. Awesome. So <laughs> hopefully uh, you're happy then because most people um, that went in it, um, they got, got the multiplier. Off. Yeah, they got the multiplier, which did uh, offset some of this downward spiral for the you know the first few months of launch. Um, yeah. Um, so that's where we started, and that's that whole community pool thing, helping the little guy. Um, what yeah. we learned from that was, hey, the community's strong when they get together. Um, and then we saw... Uh, an opportunity to like, uh, how do we, how do we um, pull together to like save on gas for steakhouse, like for hex staking, and make it viable again on he on Ethereum. And so yep. we just started to go with like the basics of what we learned through um, the community coming together, and just started implementing that type of um, philosophy into what what we're building. And same with like, you know, we never charged any fees for facilitating that pool, so we thought, well, we want to keep that same philosophy. Philosophy yep. through everything we do, um, and so the only way we actually earn anything anywhere is by staking our own token in the buffet. Yeah, yeah. So someone can come in, just uh, for example, get MCR. They'll get they'll get uh, earn some revenue um, protocol yield uh, for staking staking that, and um, you know, uh, job done. If if you if you wanted to. Yeah, so on, on just to touch on that too, and we've got the ability in the buffet to whitelist tokens in the future. It's got some pretty cool mechanisms in there. Um, so currently on Pulse, you get exposure to Pulse, Hex, Hedron, USDL, and Bean. And on Ethereum, you'll get um, ETH, Hex, and Hedron. Um, yeah. So it's it's um, we think some you know, those tokens are all pretty cool, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have the ability to whitelist, you know, so if we collab with someone in the future and their contracts check out and, you know, all that good stuff, and we're like, well, we, we've got the ability yep. to whitelist a token for reward. Um, and we can also whitelist a token purely for, like, let's say something really cool comes out, the, everything's ordered, Coach, everyone loves these guys and, and they want to reward someone. Yeah. We could we can actually add their token to our buffet and they could just simply say, well, we just want to reward your stakers and get exposure like a, like a, an airdrop. And they yeah, can yeah, just yeah. send their token uh, to our collector contract. And that collector contract will disperse that to everyone in our staking pool based on their percentage in the pool. So we've got some pretty pretty cool Interesting. mechanisms in, in, in there. And like, because it's a, a contract, no one can stop it if it's whitelisted. Yeah, yeah. Uh, someone who's benevolent might just go, well, I'm just going to send uh, some whitelisted tokens to that contract and that will get shared amongst everyone in that pool. Now, I'm not yeah. saying people are going to do that, but that, you know, it's, you do see benevolency from time to time and that, that is something that people can do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I must admit that's appealing because um, I'm, I'm sort of, I, I really, really like um, uh, get, getting positions like, you know, whether it be one percent of a staking pool or something like that, build it up to that level, and then um, you know get those reward emissions. You know, compound fifty percent, and maybe take fifty percent to take to build the next pool, and just like to do a snowball. Um, so I'm, I'm sort of going through the sort of like the we're calling uh, what true yield or, or yield uh, real yield, um, uh, earning revenue fees from activity on these protocols gives people an opportunity that that uh, you know. They can just come in and just uh, stake, buy the token stake, 
and um, and they don't have to like handle it, you know, every two seconds. Um, yeah. That's 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 really good. So that's really good. In, our, in our bios, all of our bios, there's a link tree um, or our website that'll get you to our Git book. We're, we're building that out with all how-to videos, explainers, and all that stuff for all of the DApps. Um, obviously, we've been concentrating on Barista because it's out. And the, yep. we've really just concentrated on the differences between that and Liquid Loans and then links to Liquid Loans' Git book for everything else because there was no point rehashing everything that they've already um, communicated. Yeah. So we're just yeah. putting the differences. Um, we just started streaming again. CD's going to be running. He's got a wallet that he's made public. Um, yep. We did a uh, stream today uh, using Barista, taking a loan responsibly, taking the yep. USDL from that, and put it in the stability pool. And just talking about what you said about earning passive AP, APY and, and, and having that, uh, we call it the money glitch, where you earn other money, other coins that you can then go and do what you want with. And, uh, yep. you know, we're about the passive place. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it makes it easy. It makes it easy for people. Um, so I, really, I really appreciate uh, sharing all that this coalition that I'm bringing to the table through Tetra Labs is token agnostic. Stu knows everyone here. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Neil, Barista, ID, all these projects that are coming forth are so amazing. We're unifying all the best people and it's just a giant marketing campaign and it's really exciting. I, like I've been here for a couple years and I'm really excited to be here with you guys, building really cool stuff. Yeah. And I just really love the innovation. It's so yeah, well said, Lee. And I can't, I can't like emphasize enough. Like as you said, with all of these cool teams and 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 protocols and tools, like we all collab together. We're all going to be unstoppable, and people are going to come to this chain. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. Like as a coach, that's the most excited I've ever been. I have to tell you guys, like I started first Pulse Chain channel, so I thought it was just all about Pulse Chain, and I realized no, it's about all our boys innovating their own their own innovation, bringing it to one marketing source. We all have a DeFi coalition that chants so loud, it's like exposure to every single founder who's up to par, and if their system's up to par. Stu automates it and it's like we're going to change the game and it's like but but it's all of our voices together it's just really exciting as a coach it's just like the coolest thing and i just i like all of you are the puzzle pieces and without you there's no coalition so it's so exciting it's so exciting so i'll just yeah. quickly finish off and then someone else can have the stage um so yep. Barista's on testnet as well, so people can play, right? And um, the buffet is also on testnet, so people, and we plan to keep them up as long as possible, so people can actually go and learn without real money um, and get yeah. comfortable with the system, and then they can, um, you know, go and, go yeah. and test their wares on, on mainnet, so um, they, they that's, are all that's, there. That's important. Yeah, could, could you drop the, the, the link to the testnet, please, mate? In the um, I can. It's um, but in our, again, like if you hit up uh, the link tree in our bios, you get links to everything. Um, oh yeah, yeah even just your link tree. That oh, we can find it for the. I just got a little section in my Telegram where I've got uh, for yeah. uh, open open test nets. Sure, I'll that, run that up and post it in. Let me the see. I can, link tree's the fine. I can go to the. Well, the, the, I'd have to do a, a tweet on it, but you know what I mean. And, but I'll have um, on Magic Carpet Rider. We'll have a. Uh, where are we here? I'll find, I'll find one. You guys keep talking. Right. I'll find one for a second. Cool, cool. So, um, so uh, if, if, if anyone's spe not speaking currently, Ty's about to step down, I think, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll get to it. Is anyone waiting to come up to speak? Down. I'm happy right. to keep, stay here but, and answer any yep. questions, but more just give someone else the uh, the, the time oh, sorry. <laughs> if they wanted to. No, that's okay. Um, I've I got no pend pending requests for speakers, so that's fine. So I had someone that was waiting for a little bit. Um, yeah. No, um, no. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, hi. I appreciate um, being here. Um, so the back. The, hi, everyone. There are a lot of uh, familiar faces here or logos. Um, my name is Daniel. Um, people know me as uh, Chicken Rider. I'm speaking for True DeFi. Oh, and, well, um, welcome. So I didn't. I didn't realize who you were because uh, the True DeFi .io logo. So welcome, man. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hi. So, I'd, I'd like to I'd like to share a point of view. 
Um, when we are talking about DeFi, when we are talking about crypto in general, about adoption, um, I compare this with, to a very good diet, right? With a very good diet, we we wanna. It has to be delicious. Yeah, it has to be easy to to prepare it, right? It ha it shouldn't be complicated. Uh, yeah. It has to be fun. That means we also have to have the community when 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 we are eating, right? We we want to sit with, with with good people, right? And uh, maybe with more and more people, so everyone can eat. And uh, that was the initial approach. Uh, maybe I can talk a little bit about um, True DeFi's project. What we are doing. Yeah, bring, cool, bring it thanks. on. Anyone that doesn't know, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be uh, wanting to hear about this. Um, I've gone into some of the detail and I'm getting a little bit excited. Uh, not not to hype anything, but um, to, uh, if you'd like to explain exactly what you've done with... Uh, uh, I'll, I'll give you some background on me, just because we haven't really spoken directly before. I was around in the Tron days with, uh, with T2X, um, BNB chain. You know, we've obviously seen other similar contracts. Um, but uh, I'd love to, to first start with uh, how it's designed to work just generally and then some of the things that you've done to improve on it. Yeah, thanks. Um, I think it's worth it to share, definitely. Uh, people will like it um, because it is delicious, it's easy and fun. Um, mm -hmm. I was looking actually um, back to the days uh, on Tron. I was looking um, in the whole history of, of all the depths of all the games what had most sympathy, where, you know, people really flocked in uh, and where people made money on an easy way, at least uh, at the beginning. So, and that was definitely T2X. Uh, I don't know if people know about that. That was, um, um, that idea actually came from, for everyone else. Um, do you guys remember how Hex came into life? Basically, uh, to make it short, um, yep. People would transform their Ethereum, they went into an auction lobby, they deposited yep. Ethereum, and then, you know, there was a certain amount of um, um, hex that they could transform or claim for, for the Ethereum they got on the next yep. day. And yep. then the question was, where did all the ETH go? Right? We even have a meme <laughs> talking about that. And um, so the answer is, it went to an African priest. So now... <laughs> The, the the thing is that uh, this African priest uh, we know um, that priest had to buy or possibly had to buy some some hex back or I don't know. Um, definitely uh, it was a situation that um, we have now a second token that doesn't matter if it's called hex. I like hex. I'm a very heavy hex holder, but it's still a second token. It is a different token if we are going in an auction lobby and buying any other token out there. Doesn't yeah. matter if it's called T2X, Titan X, whatever. And we always have the same situation that we have inflation. And we have this problem that we depend on adoption. Or a benevolent whale who's buying. Or whatever. But we are always dealing with a risk. And that is a second token. Because what we want is either... We want to have more dollar value or we want to have more Bitcoin value. But we want to have more value, stable 100%. value. And you see that this is why most diets don't work because people mess up priorities. And so I thought, why don't we make it very simple and uh, eliminate all or try to find all the problems that are connected to, to, to the failure of these programs, be it adoption, be it inflation, dilution be the, the dependence on benevolent whales or all of that. So yeah. we came up, um, I came up with a concept um, that um, was basically sound to not depend on it. And then I approached uh, Benjamin as an advisor, Benjamin and Neil. Uh, they advised us, um, uh, our team, and they made, uh, they gave us some suggestions and, and solutions to it um, based on the construct. That was phenomenal because now yeah. we are entering not only a sustainable situation, but actually what we wanted to do or what I wanted to do is the last person in a game should never bite the dust. Never. So they should always get their money back. There should no victim along the way. How yeah. can we do this in DeFi? And uh, the solution that uh, we all together came uh, up with 
guarantees that no one bites the dust. But if the program is, ad uh, is adopted and if their program is accepted by the community, it will turn into a very profitable situation for, for the participants. And um, so yeah. basically we came up with a P2X, that is an auction house where people can go with their PLS into the auction and participate. They can share, um, they're, they're basically competing for 1 million P2X shares per day. Uh, and the next day they cannot claim it to their wallet because there is no token. P2X will only be shares on the platform. There cannot be any inflation on the market. So now they can put it in a mining contract. Let's, let's keep it simple. Um, people know it as a staking contract. We, we call it mining. And what happens is that, um, every day's participants who participate in that auction lobby, the main part of it is distributed to all active mines, miners. And a part of it is going to to be added to a yield producing bag. And we are not talking about inflationary yield. We are not talking about um, a yield that depends on, 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 you know, a benevolent whale, but really on service fees on a uh, post chain or in the DeFi space. Yeah. So we are earning money and that money is participating in the auction lobby as well as an active participant and every day that that grows and grows and puts more money and more yield back into the auction lobby as a participant. But uh, now imagine that participant doesn't participate in the mining process. Yep. So basically uh, to make it short. Um, so if you, what you want to avoid is uh, a situation where when you have a lower volume over time in a program, that someone bites, bites the dust. So, and before looking at the consequences of a reduced deposit volume, we can assume to have a stronger deposit volume first. So from each day, 14% in the P2X model, 14% of deposit volume goes to a yield producing bag. Basically added every day. Yeah. So it's not hard to imagine that this bag receives a significant amount even in a shorter period of time, all right? So, and the yield produced with this bag comes back to the system partially to so-called bonus bag, that means, right, that that's part, it's a feature of the program, but mainly it goes back into the auction house as a deposit. So the consequence from fewer participants over time, uh, what will happen probably, uh, is yeah. that are you going to use a, a, a tetra to generate that yield or ah uh, yes of course of course uh, that's a key part i think uh -huh. it's very hard to do this without tetra um it it has to be done at the beginning uh, manually but uh, tetra will be uh, a key factor and uh, we hope that we can go along with tetra to all chains where they are planning to uh, expand um and that we can showcase uh, actually how Tetra works, how beneficial it can be for every chain, uh, for every program. And I think we are, we are an excellent, um, um, yeah, showcase actually for that. So basically to make it, I got it. go ahead. I'm sorry, Dan, go ahead. Uh, just to make it short. There are details. If you get um, in contact with us, um, uh, whoever gets in contact, they, they will easily understand uh, that uh, no one bites the dust. We are talking yep. about real 2Xing. 2X your PLS, not in value, has nothing to do with inflation. There's nothing along this way. All this uh, unnecessary fat is cut out and we, yep. have, we are dealing with a lean program that just is delicious makes fun and over time we're gonna have a very large community that we are eating together nice nice so basically pls goes in all the magic happens the magic meal happens as you describe it and yep. then over a period of time there's no set time depending on how the protocol goes the demand and things like uh, those factors you get yep. double your pls out yes <laughs> and, uh, PLS and PLS out. nice nice you nice. guys know how a 
you guys know how I like fire roasted chicken, right? <laughs> it's kind of like you have this golden hen and you set her up and, and there's just one egg. And all of a sudden you come back in a little bit and you're like, Hey, there's two eggs. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, imagine, right? When we are looking at the whole space, when we are looking at real reliable programs, uh, programs that we are calling sustainable. Okay. That everyone agrees on. Okay. Yeah. How much APR or APY do you really have there? Wouldn't it be good to do it once a year at two eggs? And That'd maybe awesome. we can even do this several times a year. And yeah. sometimes it might only be once a year. Maybe uh, you know, we have to imagine the mechanism uh, will, will be elastic. So at the beginning, of course, people who join in the beginning, they make prob most probably several times two eggs a year. People who join a little yes. bit later, they maybe in a half year, it can be possible to have it only once or twice a year. But then yeah. later, the yield that we are producing is such a big participant in the whole program because it will circulate with itself. Yeah, yeah. It is automi uh, there is an automation that the program is playing with itself and borrowing with by itself. So whoever joins at a later stage, will have similar situations like at the beginning. So there is a positive yo-yo. And this is actually where we are very happy that we can that we can bring that food to, to the table. Yeah. Perfect. That was well explained. Uh, can I say, uh, um, uh, Donald, have you got something to add or you got any questions for, for uh, P2X? Yeah, well, I just, I just had a question and a comment. Um, you, I was just wondering, is this is your protocol up and running right now that we can actually see it and test it? Uh, not yet. Um, what we do is we are waiting for the feedback from the auditors because um, uh, okay. we think it's better to, to wait for an audit. Uh, we wanted to launch first and to stimulate the market with uh, audits afterwards. Um, we don't do this. Um, it's... it's we we test see net? the um we we gonna launch uh, on 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 mainnet, but uh, okay, it takes maybe two or three weeks uh, from <laughs> here. Um, you are waiting. I am waiting. We all are waiting. <laughs> we all know that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, so I hope two weeks, uh, two to three weeks, and um, we we should be uh, we should be out. So so it'll be a okay. prior, prior, just okay. one uh, one critique, and, and this might sound wrong or bad. I don't know, but um, mm -hmm. you you you. I would hope that you can, um, like, concentrate your your pitch and and make it more focused, and yeah, j just bring that down a lot because it, it starts to get a little bit convoluted and uh, hard to follow. So, you might want to think about that. Thank you. Oh, awesome. thank you. I appreciate it. Every pitch needs to be improved all the time. All right. It's it, it's it's funny because like. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm used to the T2X pro, um, protocol. Uh, people might be used to Avarice and things like that on, on Binance, Binance chain. So, so listening to what you're saying, um, you know, I already sort of know how it sort of sort of operates. The, the connection between how the uh, the auction phase for, for Hex, that, that totally made sense. And then some of the me mechanisms. Um, but, um, but basically, uh, yeah, PLS in. The mechanism happens PLS out, um, and when you say you're going to do um, mainnet, that you mean private mainnet, and then before launch, is that right? No, uh, we we're going to launch directly. We we of course we are testing uh, first uh, um, on on uh, private host. We are testing oh, oh, on uh, yeah. testnet, of course, but uh, that's what what only uh, uh, a small group does, um, and then we are going to launch directly on post chain. Okay, uh, so just so I clarify, I understand. So it's, it's a private test net, so you're not just launching straight onto mainnet. Um, so that'll all be done. Okay, okay, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you, are you, um, when you say, uh, are you doing your own private testing on mainnet as well? No. Okay. It will be done by then. Um, no. Um, well, I would recommend then before allowing the 
front end to be public that you do do some sort of testing because there is nuanced differences between mainnet and testnet and you're going to figure that out fast when you deploy on mainnet <laughs> yeah that's, uh, that's for sure um, that'll, that'll probably yeah, happen that'll pro- i reckon yeah. that'll probably happen during the process because neil's aware of that and um so we they'd never let it um there's, there's um, a rollout uh, as ty was saying there's a rollout uh phases involved that that the checks and balances happen so that you'll probably find that'll happen during the process as well um you'll get a lot of advice similar to what ty just said um yeah 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 one of my one of my favorite things with one of my favorite things with true DeFi is when i was understanding it i talked to neil for t-shares and it is such an exciting system there's few things i get as excited about as pulse chain itself but what Stu's doing and what, what True DeFi is doing, like I actually, once you understand the nuts and bolts of how it works, it's out of control exciting. So I really appreciate talking to you guys about it. And Neil, do you want to add anything? Like it's such a cool system. Well, yeah, I mean, well, True DeFi came up out, out of building P2X out. And when we realized what we had with P2X and the possibilities, we said, well, you know, this is just a, just tools and services we can build. What if we extended our our, our reach and our um, and, and our helping hand to other communities uh, or other developers who come up with good ideas, but they don't, they don't necessarily have maybe enough devs, enough marketing, uh, funding issues, or just need some good ideas. And so we decided to put True DeFi together just to kind of build a be that. And it just so happens Tetra Labs was on the same path. It just slightly different that it's kind of the overarching umbrella that we're all sitting under and showcasing the power of the tools Tetra builds. And then we're going to be like the, I guess the hands and feet, so to speak, putting the technology to work and helping communities by linking up and providing uh, the services and marketing and all the things that we can provide to the community. So somebody has an idea, they come to us, we say, well, we can help you. Where, where are you at? And then we work out a deal and provide the, what they need to finish out, get the product to market, have it marketed right, and then they can. We know that if, if we're involved, there'd be a quality project. It won't rug or anything like that. Going sure it gets audited and all the it meets all the criteria, so we can all rest assured that things that come through us will be quality projects that we can all use safely and enjoy in the DeFi space. Also, yeah. Neil. Also, Neil, you you. With, with, with relation to, to P2X, in the previous versions uh, on other chains that it was it's um, inspired by, um, it's a different animal today compared to those contracts. Um, because I, I personally found on Tron, for example, um, you go in, you go in heavy at the start, and there was a tremendous advantage for people that got in really, really hard uh, with a lot of money up front, and that ROI within you know, sometimes three days, five days, and then all the YouTube videos have come out, and the hype is real with the project, like, so, because it's a game, uh, really, um, and, um, but, but, could you talk a little bit as to, uh, I think you've, you've placed in there, um, on some sort of a mechanism where that, that doesn't feature so heavily? Yeah, yeah, so, we've, 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 well, the reason it's P2X is all you can do Unless for a few small circumstances, you can only 2x your ROI. And that's it. That's mm-hmm. your cap. And once you 2x, you get flushed from the system and you're no longer participating. So that's one yeah. of the mechanisms that was was brought to bear to solve some of the problems with people just sitting in and soaking up all the money coming in each and every day. You get your 2x yeah. and you get out. We put limits on how many uh, poles can be in a, any given miner, which is what is my, my getting the pulse from the uh, the system. And then, which is around 55 million and some change, five, 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 five pulse. Right? <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. So that's your cap per miner. Now, you can have as many miners as you want, but if you have a billions of pulse, you want to do this, it's going to take you a lot of clicking. So this kind of discourages whales from just single click dumping and trying to mess everything up. And yeah. on top of that, we're capping how much pulse can enter in any given day. So you can't have somebody dropping in 100 billion pulse and messing it up for everybody. Right. They, that's not going yeah. to happen. So those yep. are the mechanisms uh, that keep the game uh, more, uh, I guess, equitable as much as you possibly can with any of these type of games. But at the same time, like Dan said earlier, 
it's also backed by real yield coming from D5 tools and services like Barista, for instance, and stuff like that, using to bring yeah. money back into the game to help strengthen the uh, and shorten the ROI for everybody participating. Yeah. So you can basically throttle the, the, the incoming PLS to be more equitable for everyone else that's participating in the system. That's awesome. Yep, yep. Uh, you know, what about the game aspect of it when you get to a 1.5x? Uh, can you talk about that and the yield bag? Oh, yeah. And the oh, yeah. So we have a, an incentive program to um, – with the, the whole point of the game is you want people in and out as fast as you can, right? That keeps the ROI as short as possible. We know some people will manually get out at less than a 2x. We know that happens. But when people hit a 1.5x, we're going to offer them an incentive. At that point in time, there will be a, this bonus bag option that you, they can mine from. And then it offers just whatever of that day's availability in it to be mined, and they can take it and leave if they choose to take it. it may, may put them at a 1.6x or 1.7. Who knows? Maybe even a 2.1. Or 2.2. We have no idea. That's an un, unknown thing based upon time and, and, and participation and how much yield is being produced by the benevolent wallet. So this is another mechanism we have to try to get people out sooner to let the ROI shorten up for everybody else. So that's, that's just one, one extra mechanism we, we invented to kind of incentivize people who do participate to leave sooner. Yep. Yep. I, I'd like to add something to that. Um First, we are very privileged to work with uh, Benjamin, with Neil, as very close advisors to the program. That's that's very essential, actually, because because the tokenomics is sound. The program works. Nobody will bite the dust ever. That's easy to understand once someone looks at the program. So everyone will make their two uh, X eventually. And you're right. The first week is actually not to beat. There, you know, nothing beats the participation of the first day or of the first week. Yeah. Uh, that time will never come back. But we are looking actually at a situation. How can we make sure that someone in a half year, in one year, in two years will have the same um, possibility? Uh, at least uh, once or twice or maybe more times a year. And this is where the work starts. The work actually and the focus needs to be for us on the board. How can we generate reliably real DeFi yield outside of the program that we funnel back? This is the key. So this is actually where sh people should ask very critical questions, where they should look at our fingers, where they should uh, see if the team is capable. And uh, with uh, people like Benjamin, Neil, with um, people who are talking positively about it, uh, like uh, Lit and others, um, this is actually a blessed situation where we can say, yeah, we are, we are confident that this crucial key factor can be met, actually, um, with a success, because this is actually what, what the program depends on, that we really achieve. Imagine, it's not, e you know, if, if you're having $1,000, it's easy to make 10% a day, right? If you have ten million dollar in a yield producing bag, it's not that easy. How can you make one percent a day with uh, with with ten million on a, on a small uh, chain like Pulse Chain? Yeah, you have slippage. You have all right. So this is where where you need the the most competent minds together, and uh, technology like Tetra technology that we can automate um, certain and certain processes to optimize everything that exactly the yield is coming to the program. This is actually the key factor. The rest is easy to understand for everyone who looks into it. Perfect. Yeah, I feel, I feel like this is a, uh, a protocol that's going to set a precedence. When this piece goes into play, essentially you're taking a large bag, you're funneling it down, you're stacking them up, you're only allowing certain amounts in the system at a time, you're adding yield, and at a certain point it 2Xs. Then you spit it out. When this framework is dialed in and Tetra Labs comes in to automate it, this is the co the future of the coalition. Everyone's project's going to be able to tap into all the other projects. And what we do is we create this super force of projects like this through automation and DeFi. This is one of the, the, the coolest things. If you can put a little bag in and double it stably, just imagine the imagine that world i'm really excited for that yeah 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 
So, do we do we have any other speakers that would like to come? Is I, 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 identity blocker? Are you in the, in, in the chat? Uh, if you wanted to, uh, if uh, can I rotate someone out of the speakers? If you are finished speak, speaking for the moment, I can bring you back up. Is that okay? Yeah, you can put me down. You can take me down. Awesome, awesome man. Cheers. Cool. I think so, you can get an extra if you make Neil a co or someone like that. I think you can get some extra speakers up. Okay, I'll, I'll try and do that. Um, talk about yourselves while I do this. <laughs> uh, invite co-hosts. Okay, Neil, I, I just sent you a co-host invite. Uh, if you can work out how to accept that. All right, I got should, it. Should multiple. I'll step down and let others speak. Well, you might not. You uh, might not. I really appreciate you guys. Much. You shouldn't have to lit because as you, you get more co-hosts, you get more speaker slots. So you, you can take some, me down too. No, no, it should be okay. It should be okay. But by doing this, okay. we've, we've got uh, anyone that wants a request to request to, to speak, can you please uh, request now? Because I'll probably be able to add you, as Ty yeah. said. Could I just add one thing for True Defi? Just getting back to when I was saying maybe just uh, do your own little private test on Testnet. Just to give you what we went through, because we've we seen what some other teams did and some of the um, issues they had on mainnet launch and some of them, you know, like. Obviously, as you know, first impressions, you get one shot, and if you mess it up, it can really take time to, to get confidence back, right? And so we did yep. two mainnet dummy deployments. So everything was deployed really? in real to interact with Liquid Loans with the exception of our reward token because we didn't want to farm our reward token in the testing process and then have people go, well, you just farmed your own incentive token. Um, so we did, yeah, and so... When we did the first one, we had to tweak the front end just to get all the uh, pricing that comes up on the uh, for the tickers and that. There was just little nuance differences. And then when we actually went to um, the the next deployment, dummy deployment, we tested uh, loans and liquidating ourselves, um, yeah. uh, uh, which was quite a feat because Pulse was running up at the time. So we kept... we. So when we took out the loan and had it at the minimum collateral ratio of 110, then it mm. went to 111, so we kept minting stables and kept it. And then we got redeemed against, so we didn't actually get liquidated. So then we had to spend more <laughs> real money and do it all again. So this is the process we went through in the real world, the mainnet world, um, and, and, and did all that. And then once we were satisfied that everything was working as intended, even when we went to mainnet, mainnet with our incentive token and everything, before we gave people the access to the front end, um, we still took uh, another loan and made sure everything worked as intended on mainnet. Yes, everything's good. Um, and then we opened it up. So just just be aware, True DeFi guys, like uh, I'm not sure how, how you're, I'm not familiar with that protocol, but if you have the ability to do some mainnet testing before public access, I would highly recommend it. <laughs> So I don't mean to laugh, man, but I'm just I'm just imagining someone there uh, while you're trying to do your end, sit there with a liquidation button on the on the tip of their finger. <laughs> yeah, we, we felt like people were probably watching it, um, but the price kept going up, so we just kept minting a dollar, three dollars of USDL, four dollars. It was quite funny. Um, <laughs> back, back, back then, it wouldn't have been bots either. It would have been real people sitting there waiting for you to. Hit, uh, hit that 110 or, or, eight or worse. Oh, yeah. no, this was the, the moment dummy deployments were like in the oh. last two weeks leading up to launch a week and a half ago. So these were like very oh. recent. All the, all the bots were there, but we, we couldn't get to 109.99 to be liquidated um, because Pulse is running up. So as fast as we were minting more USDL to be on the threshold, Pulse is running yeah. up. And then we got redeemed against yeah. because we were the first in line. So then we had to start again. So it was funny. We had a bit laugh, and I think it took us it took us about an hour to actually get liquidated and, and make sure everything worked as intended. But um, it was just a bit of advice for True DeFi guys because I just you know if just so you have that seamless experience with the community when when you go mainnet. No, that's valuable. Maybe valuable insight. That's awesome. So um. I don't think uh, ID Block is still with us, but if you are, man, or anyone else wants to, uh, but while, while we're around this, we're trying to round out this space now, uh, we're up against a hard uh, limit. Um, just uh, just a, a request the mic, and we'll, we're happy to have you up. Uh, all the people are here to answer questions relating to their protocols or just chat in general. If you've got uh, anything you'd like to add to the conversation, please feel welcome. Um, if I can, Neil, if I, if I can throw to you, um, 
is there, is there anything that um, I mean, obviously, you're getting a, a volume of, um, of protocols appro approaching uh, t uh, Tetra Labs. Um, is there is there any sort of things that you can talk about at this current stage or not, where um, you could uh, you, you, you find, you're finding uh, good ways of uh, imp improving and making contracts safer? Uh, and what's been the response? What's what's been the response from the, the devs? Uh, are you finding mainly positive? Yeah, I think as we as people approach us and ask us questions for help and stuff and ideas, um, I, I think a lot of you, when we find out, you have people with like I have this idea and I have a dev I'm working with, but a lot of not every dev is a is a is a is a, is a visionary or thinker. He's a dev. He's a code guy. He's in. He's on the code line by line. He's not thinking about the bigger picture. Yeah, and I know if, if you've ever built stuff or work with guys who are like that, they're just very single focused. You know, they, they can produce the work. You tell them what to do, they do it, and they don't really think about how to solve the problem in, in the overall design. And the, and you have a guy who's an idea, but he may not understand how all the DeFi works, all the blockchain works, and ways you can improve. So it's really we find that the people really need a depth of knowledge to understand what's available in on the blockchain in general on a, on a technological sense. Like what is Kate? What what is the blockchain capable of at this point in yeah. time, what can we employ to make our, our idea better? You know, and there's all kinds of stuff comes out every day. So it's a constant for us. It's we're always learning every day about new stuff. I mean, we just had the 404, uh, NFT thing to be a big, just a big launch thing. Everybody's now jump on the bandwagon. Well, we had somebody come ask us about 404 stuff. What can we do to help? And obviously automation solves a lot of problems for most contracts and how people consider the doing stuff, especially if you're trying to build something that yeah. repurposes your know, funds from point A to point B, and you you want to reward your customers. That you don't want to yeah. do that anyway manually. And it's a pain to do it, and it's not yeah, even no. safe to even hard code that because if you hard code it, then you're relying wherever you're getting the yield from to exist in a year from now. And what if it doesn't? What if you try <laughs> to put so you hard code a farm and it, a farm's turned off? I mean, then you're yeah, screwed. Yeah. And so you don't want that. Yeah, because people change change from V one um, liquidity to V one to V two to V three. Like we're all all kinds gonna of end. yeah, 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 exactly. So true migrations. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. And, and so what you want to do is be able to have things like Tetra can be can be nimble enough. Like oh, that one drops, you just go in there and change the Tetra point of where you're putting your liquidity, move it over to this other one, and, you, and it still it still works. So it's going to be hard coded, and that's what's yeah. one of the things that Tetra can solve for a lot of people is things like that. And so yeah. with that being said, and then really marketing is another thing that a lot of these guys come up to us like, well, we, 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 well, we have an idea, but we have no idea how to get, get it to the people. Well, we can help with that too. Yeah. And that's where we have yeah. lit. Yeah. And, and, and his, his team, and that's going to be the marketing power will, will use to get the word out among other things. Right. And so once we get going, we'll have a budget for marketing and we'll have you know budgets for you know hiring other devs and we have we have contacts between the Tetra labs and all the resources we have at Tetra and outside of Tetra we have independent contractors who all they do is dev work that or that they work with like SparkSwap and others. You know, we just know these people and they're willing to work with us and we'll we'll pay them to work. I mean it's just that simple. And this is yeah. a business, and you got treated as a business, and that's how we're looking at this whole thing. If you want good quality products and services to be brought to market, you got you need to do it the right way, and you need to do it like yeah. a business would, and not just a bunch of guys in their pajamas sitting there in their mama's basement coding stuff out. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and fl and fluffy slippers, <laughs> right? And fluffy slippers. <laughs> but that, but that's how we me and Stu we and me and Stu both own businesses and, and have. And run things. We're both architects, and we both we're almost the same person. We just took two different career paths in, in, yeah. in our focus. It's kind of it's kind of ironic how we met and get along so well. But so we we run it the same way. It's the same mindset. We have the same purpose, and yeah. Uh, yeah. and we, that's what we're trying to do with True DeFi, and then Tetra Labs too as being like a showcase for all the things that you can build on top of and with to a Tetra. Because Tetra's got to be agnostic, so we can't like favor anybody. But we can say, hey, look, these people use these tools. You can see what yeah. they've done. And here's the tools, and we can, and True Def, True I can help you and educate you how to use the Tetra tools when they come available to the market as well. Hundred percent. So if you if you've got if you've got a, a really really good idea, um, and and you'd like to to talk, or you've got a protocol that you've got halfway done or fully done, um, and you don't have any sort of um, marketing prowess, um, you could basically talk to someone like yourself. 
and Tetra Labs and, and just start a conversation and it's an open door uh, where, you know, you can, you can nut out exactly how it's going to work, how it's not going to work and uh, get all the nuts and bolts together. Yeah, okay. And I want to say this, it's really no different than what Stu and his team has already been doing, right? Um, I've got to give a lot of um, gratitude and uh, respect to Stu, right? He's put some really good men and women around him who truly want to help other people. And, and behind the scenes, um, he's been having those conversations, and we've been having those conversations, hence what Barista said, hence what all these other people say, have been saying. So, you know, when, when Stratus and Atlas come online soon, and you're, when you're able to do all these automations, um, it really is going to be a, some powerful, powerful tools for Pulse Chain. And, you know, uh, the people around Stu, really want to help other people be successful because when they're successful, Tetra is going to be more successful. And I know we've been saying that, but you got to have people that you can trust, right? Like people who aren't going to screw you over or people who are accepted in the community. Right. And I think Stu and his team, have, I think they've proven that. And with this Tetra labs, just imagine the power of, um, you know, people coming into Tetra Labs and it's vetted by, you know, by him and uh, his team that that's going to automatically give people some juice when they come in. Now, hence, Tetra's agnostic and they don't, um, you know, they can't vouch for any particular protocol, but there is this sense of community, right? What we're building here. And I think Tetra really is going to be a, a powerful tool that when we look back from a year from now and we see everything that's taken place in all directions, it, it will probably be one of the centerpieces, just the way that autom how big of automation is and the, and the power of it. Like this true DeFi or this P2X thing, right? This, that protocol's because of um, the automation and um, uh, Neil, or not Neil, Daniel, you know, taking some counsel with um, myself and um, Neil, like, we really changed his protocol and made it something very special, right? So you got to have the right minds and you got to have people that are open. You got to have people that you can trust. So I'm happy to, to be a part of this and really all the gratitude and all the hard work goes to Stu for putting the right people around him and, you know, doing everything organically. So yeah, yeah I just wanted yeah. to say that. No, absolutely. I mean, and that's what gives, gives Tetra Labs, uh, the brand some meaning is that, is that, um, it's, it's supported and people that do have good ideas that, uh, and you're, you're right. It's, it's the, it's the, it's a people business that happens to do crypto and software. Um, and it, you know, there's a heavy focus, um, in my experience around the, around the people. And, uh, and, uh, if you, if you're coming forward and you've got an idea or you've got a protocol, you've got, you've got something you, got, you want to bring to market. Um, and um, you know you're known in the com community, or you want to put something forward. It's uh, it's an avenue now where you know it can see the light of day. Um, it's awesome. But uh, now, uh, can I just put, uh, give a uh, broad just sort of invitation? Anyone want to add anything before I round round out the the space? Um, we we just passed the the hard hard stop that I that I did plan to have, but that's okay. It's been a great conversation. Um, any anyone want to have some final words before we uh, wrap it up? I just appreciate the, the positive space. Um, yeah, it, it's 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 definitely refreshing because there's been a lot of uh, non-focused uh, spaces that, yeah, j this is just refreshing. So I want to make sure I've got my notifications for you you on so I can enter these more often because it, it's a great initiative you've got going. Thank you, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Any, anybody else? Otherwise, I'll say thank you. And uh, thanks, thanks for tuning in. Same time next week, and uh, we'll keep them a little bit shorter so that you know if someone's going to watch the recording. They're not going to they're going to look at a five hour recording, three hour recording. Although those those talks were amazing that we did have, but um, it gives a, ch a chance for people to you know live their life as well as uh, catch up on some news. Um, again, thank you very much. I'll call it there, and uh, I'll see you guys again next week. Uh, again, thank you. Appreciate. Thanks. Thanks, thanks much.